Nice to see everybody today. And as Dr. Kashevsky said, the, um, the topic that I'm going to discuss today, and then there's, I'm going to try to leave plenty of time for questions, this is a really a new, new and developing area of interest in bioethics, but also in the medical realm. And by way of introduction, all of you know about the Human Genome Project and the amount of time and interest and research and funding that went into the Human Genome Project, mapping the entire human genome, has generated and did generate a lot of buzz, a lot of interest, and now we're starting to see some of the outworkings of that new, newly gained knowledge. Uh, one of those is personal genomic information and questions about what does that mean, what is personal genomic information, and what kind of impact is that going to have within the medical realm. One subset of that is direct-to-consumer genetic testing. And basically, I'm going to go through and talk specifically about a, a particular type of direct-to-consumer genetic testing, and then raise some of the policy ethical issues as well as practical issues for physicians. So what is direct-to-consumer genetic testing? Well, basically, direct-to-consumer genetic tests are things that anybody can go online, basically on the Internet, and actually order. A whole range, there are a whole range of different services, as you'll see here. There are a range of different tests and different companies that offer the testing. Some of those are for specific conditions. Others are uh, what are called whole genome scans, which I'll go into in more detail in a little bit. But the tests and the companies, um, they range from, say, ancestry testing to paternity testing to a whole range of other things. And what I'm going to focus on today is the personal genome scans. And those are really offered, um, they check a range of mutations and a range of polymorphisms, um, as well as things that have varying penetrance. So they're more or less likely to actually um, demonstrate. There are a whole range of diseases and conditions, as well as associated risks, and that, in that particular category actually raises some of the specific ethical issues and questions, as well as the variant range of reliability, validity, and clinical utility of these tests um, and the claims made by the companies. Now, the bulk of this testing, uh, the direct-to-consumer genetic testing, started to become available late, very late 90s, early 2000s. And some companies have already come and gone, but there are certainly are companies that have stayed uh, and changed and developed over the course of time. So it looks like some of those are actually going to be around for some time. I would break down the categories and types of testing into three general categories. The first one is the category of tests that happen, things with what I'm loosely terming known reliability and validity, as well as clinical utility, and I'll give some examples in just a moment. The second category would be things that are tested for, where they're, they're, the companies um, and the genetics community, the scientific community, is looking for links between potential links to dis specific diseases, um, but these are generally tested in a range of things that are much more common in the general population, so not necessarily one specific genetic condition or a rare genetic condition, but things that lots of us might carry this particular uh, polymorphism or alteration in our genetic material. What we're not yet clear about is what those, which are sound links, which are um, robust links, and what things we think might be there but have yet to be proven, and what that means. The third category, again, I'm loosely terming health-related areas, and I'll give some examples of that in a minute. So the first category, things that have known reliability, validity, and clinical utility would be, for example, this is just one category, carrier status. So there are direct-to-consumer genetic tests that you can order, which will tell you whether you are a carrier for cystic fibrosis, sickle cell, Tay-Sachs, BRCA1 and 2. Um, Obviously, if you're taking those as an adult, many of those, aside from BRCA1 and 2, but cystic fibrosis and sickle cell, you would probably already know if you had it, you wouldn't if you had developed the condition, but you wouldn't necessarily know if you were just a carrier. Um, and so that is certainly available now. But those are things where uh, the genetics community is much more confident in the association, and the medical community, we have developed some... Um, approaches to intervention, not necessarily cures, but some type of management. It would change your, your management or the management for a particular patient. 
BRCA1 and 2, breast cancer, BRCA1 and 2. Um, again, that's a good example where there's a, there are a whole range of possible mutations, and the tests look for specific clustering of those mutations. But even if I took that test and it came back and said, yes, I had one or more of these mutations for BRCA1 or 2, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that I'm going to develop breast cancer or ovarian cancer. It certainly raises my risk, elevates my risk, but it's not 100%. The second category where we have potential links to diseases, uh, here we have a whole range of things, and this is really where a lot of the research is going on right now. A lot of these companies not only want uh, people to buy the tests uh, so that they can um, um, have that commercial uh, engagement, but they also are doing research themselves with a whole variety of labs to see whether they can actually map and locate um, a different association or a stronger association for a whole range of these things. And all of these things currently offered right now, you could go and order it as part of a, a broader panel today. Now in health-related areas, this is where there, I, I would say there's been more um, toing and froing, more change over the last six, eight years. Um, initially there were companies that offered uh, this second thing, nutritional profiles and they would, you would give them a saliva sample, they would do a, some sort of analysis, it wasn't quite, quite clear what they were doing, and they would then send you a profile of how your body metabolized certain things, whether you were low on this or high on that, and then they would link that to uh, a series of supplements that they would like to sell you. Okay, that was one classic that was around in early 2000s. Um, where some of the more specific information is coming out now, is with this drug response or drug sensitivity category. And uh, for example, in the study that we're doing here, um, we have had some folks that have taken uh, one of the DTC tests and they have come back with either an increased sensitivity or a decreased sensitivity, particularly to Plavix and Coumadin. So very common drugs prescribed very regularly. Um, hepatitis C treatment would be another area. Uh, one of the companies offers also things for a specific cancer drug. Um, which obviously would be much less likely to be used in the general population. And then there's this subcategory here, which I, I just called traits. So some of the direct DTC companies will offer you uh, an assessment of your traits. So you get a genetic analysis of basically things you already know, right? Your hair color, your eye color. You might not know about your earwax type. That's kind of one of my favorites and a running joke, whether you have wet or dry earwax. So really very important for your life <laughs> and how you're going to live your life. But nonetheless, those are some of the things that people find interesting. Uh, they don't necessarily affect your, your health care management in any way. Um, the other, my other favorite from a few years ago, I don't know that it's still offered now, is that um, there was a company that advertised online which said that it would develop and um, tailor face cream to your DNA. So. Um, even beauty products are getting in on that. It's important to remember, though, that when we talk about genetics, anytime you're talking about genetics, it's very rare that genetics is 100% deterministic, right? So we know that our DNA, we know that um, environment, lifestyle, all have a role to play in our overall health and well-being, and certainly that's the case for um, patients and people who order these tests as well, but um, interesting just to remind people of that. So as I said, the specific kind of testing that I'm going to look at today and th that's involved in the study that we're doing is called a genome scan. They're also known as, some people term them a whole genome scan, although it's not technically your entire genome. Um, or personal genome scans, personal gen genomic testing, all of that. And the way that that has been linked most commonly that I've heard certainly to medical, the medical realm is personal genomic medicine. So are we going to enter or are we in an era where we're going to be able to run a series of genetic tests on a patient and then alter their medical management uh, intervention uh, based on that information that we find through their genome? Now, we're certainly not there, but this, uh, there's some new technology that has basically allowed companies to process millions 
a variance. So 100 of these tests um, that are available online, they would look at 500,000 to a million variants, genetic variants, and then give a series of results back. Um, multiple single nucleotide polymorphism testing is the technical term. Um, but that is different. I'm told that the, the, the lab testing, the process of testing is different than we were able to do even a few years ago. And so that's enabling this high throughput um, type of genetic testing. Again, there is a range of validity, reliability, and accuracy. So the testing process, if you were interested in testing, you could um, order a test kit online. There are a handful of companies that offer this. Um, they cost the test, this is for a, a genome scan, so a personal genome, genome scan. That would range between $429 right now to $999. Um, 18 months ago, that was different. It was $1,000 to $2,500. So it's come down that much in 12 to 18 months. And I don't know that the testing will go down a great deal below 429. That's very, very low, but it could. And certainly the higher end range has come down significantly as well. Um, you take a saliva sample. This is an example of one of the kits from 23andMe. And they send you that. You take a saliva sample. It's actually um, not a cheek swab. So you produce a certain amount of saliva. Uh, they have a buffer in that kit. You send it back to them and then it goes into the, um, the process of analysis on the company's side. The results are then sent back to the consumer within about two to four weeks and the consumer sets up an account. Those results are sent or produced online through that online account. So um, the companies don't necessarily send you a hard copy of that. I'll just give you a quick idea here. So one of the companies, 23andMe, that would be an example of their website. You can see um, that they are off, they are, you have the ancestry testing, which some people are interested in. You have the health edition, which is what I'm talking about today, the genome scan, the personal genome scan, and um, then you can have a combination. And so this is the kind of advertising, the kind of um, things that they're offering for folks. Another company that, has, that is actually working with some people at Mayo Clinic um, to develop this is Navigenics. And they used to be $2,500, now they're down to $9.99. They offer, 23andMe has more uh, tests that they look at. Navigenics has kept it narrow and I think they've done that purposefully. Um, and those are just two examples of, of, a, of a handful that you can people can access. So what do the professional statements actually say about this kind of testing, right? So you'll see here that the message is very consistent from this whole range that the um, comple because of the complexity of genetic information and the challenge of interpretation of this kind of direct-to-consumer genetic testing, 